Okay, in this video I'm going to use a Maclaurin or Taylor series to approximate a definite integral to within a, a desired accuracy. And what we're going to approximate is we're going to approximate the definite integral from 0 to 1 of x times cosine x cubed. And we're going to do this to within three decimal places. And we're going to use a couple things here to make life a little bit easier for us. Um, the two things that are going to come in useful here, uh, we're going to use the the power series representation of cosine x. So the power series representation for cosine x is from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x raised to the 2n, all over 2n factorial. Um, it's not too terribly difficult to derive this, but this is certainly one that I think it's useful to have memorized. And uh, we're also going to use the alternating series estimation theorem. You can see we're going to get an alternating series here. And just to remind you, the alternating series estimation theorem says that the error, when you approximate uh, your, your function, it says for an alternating series, it says the error is at most the absolute value of the first neglected term. So we're going to make use of these two, these two nice facts. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find a power series representation for the function x times cosine x cubed. Okay, so this is easy to do by manipulating this, this known power series because what it says is, it says whatever you plug in, it says you basically just plug that in and raise it to the 2n. So cosine of x cubed, that's going to be the summation from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, and again we just, we just replace. So instead of x, we're going to have x cubed all raised to the 2n power. And that's being divided by 2n factorial. So we could simplify this a little bit. So this is the summation from n equals 0 to infinity, uh, negative 1 to the n. Again, we can just multiply. So we would just be left with x to the 6n. And then that's all divided by our 2n factorial. OK, so that's not quite what we want, but uh, that's a starting point. We want, though, the function cosine, excuse me, x times cosine of x cubed. Well, we know the, the power series representation for cosine of x cubed. We just produced it. So now we just have to take x and multiply it by that series representation. So negative 1 to the n, x to the 6n over 2n factorial. But there's a rule that says, you know, basically you can just multiply, so this is x to the first. Um, we can basically just put that inside. And if we do that, we'll get from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n. Okay, so if I have x to the first times x to the 6n, like bases, we just add the exponents. We'll have x to the 6n plus 1, all divided by 2n factorial. Okay, so this is going to be the, the useful part because this is now, this power series is what we're going to be integrating over. Okay, so we wanted to compute the definite integral from 0 to 1 of x times cosine x cubed dx. But what we're going to do is we're going to instead integrate its equivalent power series representation. So we'll integrate from 0 to 1 of the summation from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the 6n plus 1, all divided by 2n factorial. Um, and we're integrating this with respect to x. So again, to integrate uh, a power series is easy. Again, all you really do is just look at your variable. So we have x, and just you know normal integration. We add 1 to the exponent. Okay, so when we integrate, we'll have from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, that just comes along for the ride. If I add 1 to the exponent, well, instead of 6n plus 1, we're going to have 6n plus 2. When we integrate whatever the new exponent is, that's what we divide by, 6n uh, plus 2. And then all of that times 2n factorial. But again, we're evaluating this from 0 to 1. So obviously this problem is set up a little nicely in, in the fact that the lower limit of integration is 0. That's going to make, uh, obviously, the lower limit just go away. So we're left, when we do our substitution, when we evaluate our definite integral, when we plug our 1 in, we'll just be left with negative 1 to the n. 
Well, we would have 1 to the 6n plus 2, all divided by 6n plus 2, 2n factorial, minus the summation from n equals 0 to infinity. But if you plug 0 in, we're just going to get a bunch of zeros. So in this case, all that we're going to be left with, all that we're going to be left with will be our series from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n. 1 to any power just simplifies to 1, so the 1 to the 6n plus 2 is just going to equal 1, so I'm going to just leave that off. Then we have 6n plus 2 over the quantity, uh, excuse me, negative 1 to the n over the quantity 6n plus 2 times 2n factorial. And again, this is what our definite integral is equal to. So we know the integral from 0 to 1 of x cosine x cubed dx equals all this stuff. So again, remember we're trying to approximate this to within uh, three decimal places. And this is where we're going to now make use of the fact that this is an alternating series, and we're going to use the alternating series uh, estimation theorem. So OK, I'm going to expand out a few terms here. If you plug in n equals 0, we'll get negative 1 to the 0, which is just 1. If you plug in n equals 0, 6 times 0 is 0, we'll have 2 left over. And then if we plug in 0, we'll have 0 factorial, but that's defined to simply equal 1. Okay. My next term, if I plug in n equals 1, we'll get a negative 1 on top. And then when we plug in n equals 1, we'll get 6 plus 2, or 8, times 2 factorial. Let me expand out a couple others. You can check my arithmetic here. If you plug in n equals 2, we'll get a positive 1. It looks like we get 14 times 4 factorial. And then we'll get a minus if you plug in, so 0, 1, 2. If you plug in n equals 3, we'll get negative 1. If you plug in n equals 3, we'll get 6 times 3, which is 18 plus 2. We'll get 20, uh, and then 6 factorial. And you could keep expanding this out, but what we're doing is we're trying to figure out uh, when the first term, uh, which term has value uh, that's What's the best way to say it? We want to figure out the first term that basically we see decimal places, the first three decimal places being uh, zeros. Because then if we neglect that term, we know that our, our, our series is correct within that accuracy, which will be three decimal places. Okay, so if you simplify this a little bit, I got this to be 1 half. Okay, 8 and, so 2 factorial is 2, so that's 1 over 16. Uh, 14 and 4 factorial, I got that to be 1 over 336. And then I got my next term, the 20 times 6 factorial, I got that to be equal to 14,400. But this is now the good part, because if you take the absolute value of this term, if you look at the absolute value of negative 1 over 14,000, 400. I got this to be roughly equal to the number point zero 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 uh, one two three four zeros and then a seven. Okay, so it says by the alternating series estimation theorem, it says if we approximate the integral using the first three terms, it says we know that we'll be we'll have the correct value. The error is at most the size of the first neglected term, but the size of the first neglected term is roughly 0 .0007. So if we just use the first three terms, it says our error is going to certainly agree uh, with the first three decimal places. We're going to get a very small error. So it says, in fact, our estimate to this, to this definite integral, it says we could simply use the estimate um, so our integral is roughly going to be equal to 1 half minus 1 over 16 plus 1 over 336. Uh, again, you can check my arithmetic on this. Let me see where I found it. I think this is roughly equal to 0 0.440. And again, we know the error is at most 0 0.0007. So we know it's certainly correct to three decimal places. We could actually even say something a little stronger and say, hey, it's actually correct to four decimal places. So nothing too crazy. 
Um, again, kind of the, the, the things that make this problem nice, first off, the lower limit of integrations is zero. So when we expand things out, we get something kind of nice. The other thing is the, uh, that it's an alternating series, and it's easy to use the alternating series estimation theorem. So if you, wanna, if you run across one of these problems, how many terms should I use? There's really no basic, uh, there's nothing... Uh, I mean, to me, the easiest way is just to really start plugging and chugging, kind of evaluating the numbers and figure out, you know, which term is kind of small enough to give you the desired accuracy that you're looking for. So, all right, I hope this video makes some sense, and if you have any comments or questions, as always, feel free to post them.